Okay, welcome, welcome everybody to number three, presenting like a pro. This one's going to be so much technical, more um, aesthetic, um, setting to look good on the screen. But uh, before we do that, um, we're going to have some uh, question and answer. And before we do that, I'm really keen to know how you're going and whether you've taken some action steps because uh, one of our big things we tried to push uh, last uh, on, on uh, Monday was to, you know, really take this and go for it. So hands up, who's had a play around with Zoom? Good job, everyone. And hands up, who's had a play around with Eventbrite? Great. And mm -hmm. who's actually got some dates? Ooh. All right, good. good. So we're gonna show you our calendar a little bit later and uh, we'll show you that there are a few people that have already up on the calendar. I know there's a couple that are, um, have given some dates but are just confirming. Uh, with Sarah, but we'll show you what it, what it will be look, what it will look like and where we'll be pushing a lot of traffic to try to get you more uh, people on online classes. So we've got a, a, a fun night ahead. And I will, without further ado, over to Mena to offer some question and answer on either Zoom or on, um, on Eventbrite. So, over to you, Mana. I'll put myself on silent. Thanks, Pete. Hi, everyone. How is everybody today? Is it a good start? Is it a good day? All right. Okay. So, any, so I'll just quickly go through the questions I've received, and I'll kind of give the responses. So, see if it applies to everyone, and then we can come back with more questions, and then I'll see how much I can respond now. And if I cannot, I'll definitely get back to you. So one thing, I think I was chatting with Helen today on Facebook, and uh, it's about creating an event and pushing into Facebook, uh, sorry, creating an event on Eventbrite, and then not able to push it into the Facebook. So the basic conditions are, like these are a bit more details, but unless you do the basic stuff, I can't give you this because it would be over complicating in the first session. So there are a few events that you cannot push into Facebook, one is, if you run events on donations, you cannot push it into the Facebook. So you have to bypass the procedure, as I mentioned on the Facebook again, saying that create it as a free event, push into Facebook, and then come back to Eventbrite and change it to the donations option. So that will work for you. And when you do that, ensure that you give your bank account details and under the payout method. Are you with me? Okay, and the second question was about creating an event in Eventbrite and not able to push into your Facebook personal or group page. That's a no-no because Eventbrite and Facebook do not allow uh, sharing the events from Eventbrite onto a personal profile page or a group profile page. So it should be onto your business page. So, and all business pages, they're pretty much the same. Go into the about section on the left hand side, scroll down and you have a page ID. So there should be, and if you're not finding it, that means you're not on a business page. You may be on a personal or a group profile page. Are you with me? Okay. And number three, uh, I think uh, Julianne was asking me, yeah, that's right. So there were two questions from Julianne. Yes, you have the options on your Zoom where you can actually check the option button of register. So when you choose the option button register, when you're scheduling your meeting, that means people should first register. So you get an email and that's when they can attend your Zoom meeting. If you don't tick that, people can straight away log into your, you're just using the Zoom URL which you share with, the, with your participants or attendees. Hi. Hi, Julianne. Hi, Mena. Um, yeah, so I was just wondering, because what I wanted to do was to have them register so that I could ask a couple of questions yeah. um, 
like what was their location, whether they're male, male or female, had they meditated before and that type of thing. So. Yeah. Okay, so I can come back to that. So one is you can schedule a poll in the meeting room, which is, yes, you take a register and say you, you chose that option of register for the meeting, they register. And at the time of registration, when they give their details, you don't have an option directly to send a kind of a survey questionnaire from Zoom, unless you're in a business or an enterprise, uh, what do you say, version. But in, the, in, a, in, in your regular Zoom Pro version, what you can do is before them attending the meeting, you can create a poll in your meeting controls. So before starting your meeting, you can create a poll and the options are, I'll just give you the breakup. It would be go into your account management on Zoom, so your personal profile, click on that. Then you will see account management on the left-hand side. And under account management, you see settings. And under settings, you turn on your poll button. So I'll just quickly share the screen. And I saw your query just before getting into the meeting. So, so that's instead of doing register or that's as well as? Okay, can you see my Eventbrite screen? Yes. Uh, Are you seeing my even bright screen or? Uh, Mana, no, an email. email address. Oh, sorry. Okay. Even bright. Share. Okay. Now, do you see my even bright screen? Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you go here. Okay. So if you go into account management, account settings, and then you choose here meeting basics. And if you come down, so these are all the options you have. Just quickly play with your, and see here polling. So you can actually turn that status on. So even before attending, starting the meeting, you can put those questions on poll and you can get responses for your meeting. Otherwise, you have to use some external survey options like a MailChimp or poll on Facebook options. You can choose that to get the basic demography of your participants. Oh, okay. And also, would having a register on it, would that stop it from pushing it to Facebook because I had a trouble I can't push to Facebook event. But no, that shouldn't stop you. Maybe that should be some other issue. If, you, if you're just using a register button, that should not, that should not prevent you from pushing into FB. Well, because I, I go to, because um, it said congratulations, it's published, but then when I said um, to push it to Facebook, it takes me to the add to Facebook page. Yeah. But then it doesn't allow me to click or any, on anything or do anything to get it any further. It just okay. stays on step one, just paste okay. it up. Yeah, I think that's a troubleshoot. That's, uh, there are two, op two, two, two areas where we can actually go wrong. It's not enough. You just connect your Facebook page. You also should go and add the page ID. Yeah, I, I, I did. I was pretty sure I did. Okay, so then I think we had to take it offline and probably we can just, if you can send me a screenshot, I'll have a look okay. at that because registration shouldn't stop you normally. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bronwyn, I think Bronwyn is asking, can you repeat the steps you go through to create a poll? <laughs> it's uh, go into your account management. So you go into your personal profile and then on the left-hand side, you would see account management. Under account management, go into account settings. And then, you will see meeting basic, probably I can just quickly share my screen one more time. Okay, so I'm in my, I'm in the account management account settings and you will see this over here, go into your meeting basics. And then if you just, these are all the options you have. So when you're setting up your meeting, can you see my screen everybody? I can't see you, so someone can say yes. Yep, we can see it. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah, so these are all the options you have. You can send reminders, you can uh, you can allow people to chat, you can control. These are all your active controls under your settings. 
So if you go down here, there's polling, and then you can turn it on. So account management, account settings, going to meeting basic, and then you can turn it on or off. Does it answer your question, Bronwyn? Are you happy with that? Bronwyn, where is Bronwyn? Okay, good, okay. All right, so any more questions? So those are the ones I've received so far. Donations, free, not able to push through, page ID. Patricia, yeah, okay, yes, Patricia. Yeah, sorry, it was just in terms of tagging. So I don't know if the Australian Eventbrite is different from the UK one, but when I created the event, I had no options to, to use any tags. So um, it should I don't be know if I was doing something wrong. Hold on, just let me have a look. I'll share my screen and let's see what's happening there. It should, I do, under your basic info, you should see the tags. And so I go to, can you see my even bright screen, everyone? Yeah. Uh, okay. Management. Say if I go into sorry, my net is a bit slow today, so you do. okay. So, Katrice, are you going into, like when you get into your basic info screen, just let me know if you see the same fields. What, you want me to do it right now? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'll just show you and then you can take it offline. And if you don't find that, probably you can just leave a message on Facebook in the group. And then okay. so what you're saying is you go into your basic info, you see the event title. Right. And do you also see these three categories there? Yeah, I had the three categories, but I just wasn't able to get the tag, but I didn't actually enter yeah. it from the basic info. So I'll try that to be honest. Yeah, I think this is important because if these are apart from event title on this page, all others are not mandatory. So probably it's easy to miss. Yeah. So because okay. even title, if you don't update that, it will not take you to the next step. If you don't update your location, it will not take you to the next step. But these are easy ones to be missed. So just ensure, and you can add one word at a time. Yeah. yeah. And also, okay, the, mm -hmm. yeah. and the best, best way to find out what tags to use is just do a Google search on saying even bright mindfulness events. And if you look at search a couple of events, then you will know what sort of words they're using because tags are pretty much the words people use. So you know what are the most popular ones. So that will kind of act like a guide for you. So just check yeah. your events on Eventbrite and see what the, what words are coming up. And they write okay. up. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. No worries. Excuse me, Mana. Yeah, yes. Um, I'm just wondering, the, the problem I had pushing Facebook, um, pushing it across to Facebook, um, I had trouble when I was win in Eventbrite yeah. um, and when I've gone into setting up the organiser, on yeah. the page it shows, um, sorry, I'm just having a look here, under my organiser profiles it has, an, it has two sections, it has unnamed organiser and then it has guided meditation with Jules, which I set up, but I don't know how to get rid of the unnamed organiser. Would, oh. would that be the problem? No, it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect you. As long as you're under organizer, when you have this guided meditation with Jules and if that's an organizer and you click on that. Yeah. And when you go into your organizer profiles, you should have two organizer profiles. One is guided meditation with Jules and the other one is just unnamed random what you have created in the past probably. So you should choose your guided meditation with Jules organizer profile, get your page, book, page ID onto that. There, it is on that, but I just don't know how this one becomes. I don't know if this one's set for the default one or not. No, there's nothing like a default. You always have to go and choose your organizer. So let's let me see if I can share because I edited my even bright sign. It's not sure, but still I will see what I can do with that. Thank you. So I'm going to my organization settings.
So that's Skillful Mind is the organizer. So I have like five or six pages. And in this case, for this event right account, Skillful Mind is the organizer. And you see how organizer profiles, you have unnamed organizer, CFO Hub Skillful Mind. Can you see that, Julianne? Sorry. Yes. yes. Okay. So oh, every time, well. yeah, every time I schedule an event, I go and choose that organizer. How maybe I didn't choose that one for my yeah. if you don't sure. choose it, it will randomly pick up unnamed organizer probably, but you have to choose every time because I manage these different pages. So I choose that organizer. And when you go into the organizer profile itself, you can see say here how the organizer profile I set it up to connect to the Facebook. So I don't have to worry about because it connects the Facebook I I just give the page ID and also yeah. you give your Facebook page website somewhere here. That's your okay. website. Uh, why can't I see this here? Yeah, I think because this is already updated, it is not showing the URL and it's just connected it. But otherwise, you will see when you go into this organizer profile for the first time when you're setting up, it will ask you for the website as well as your Facebook page. Yeah, I don't have a website but i did put the facebook page in facebook page yes yeah. so you should have a facebook page the url as well as your id and every time you schedule an event choose the organizer where when or where is the part to choose the organizer oh okay so i'll just share my screen Please don't take me. So in events, when you see the basic info down there, it asks you basic info or details. It asks you for the organizer and we choose the organizer there. So just let me see if I can take you there. Sorry, my internet is a bit slow today. So it should be on one of these two pages right at the bottom. Wait and see here, organizer. Can you see this, Julia? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So it's in basic info. You have to go and choose the organizer from there, and then it kind of connects instantly. And it's always good to actually connect the organizer first over there because in order to get the connection between Eventbrite and Facebook, there's normally a five minute to ten minute glitch time lapse. So if you connect it here, and by the time you finish your event, it should be ready for you to push it into FB. All right, guys, probably time to move on now if we can. We'll, still, we'll stay okay. on at the end as well for any more questions. Is that okay? All right, Julian. So that answers your query. And if you have any more questions, feel free to post that on the FB. And I'll, ad I'll address that. And then I will also, if possible, I'll also put some screenshots for you so you know. So, but feel free to start posing questions because your questions can also be someone else challenges as well. So it will help everybody to know and we have data there. All right, so now I would give over to Sarah who will run you through the calendar for Skillful Mind and then we'll get back. Over to you, Sarah. Hey everyone. Okay, I'm just going to quickly share my screen with you and show you uh, the last few sessions. We keep talking about the online calendar and we were speaking about it before. So I'm just going to share that with you. We've now 
posted it onto the website, the Skillful Minds website as well. Can you see my screen? Yeah, cool. Okay, so this is the Skillful Mind website. I'm sure you all know it well enough by now. And if you click here, find an online class. So we've changed this over to online now, but it still has all, the, all your pages and information as usual. So if you click here, search, search near you. Um, we've added in these two buttons. There's still all the old ones down here as always, but now we have these two here primarily for the online classes. Um, I do just want to point out before I open them that although it says Australia and UK, they are both, they have the same classes on them. We've just made two calendars, so there's different um, time zones. So if you click on it, this is, for example, the Australian um, time zone, Sydney time zone. And you can see we have a few classes up here already. So Mondays with Helen, and it's got all the information, the Eventbrite link. If you click on that, obviously it'll take you to her Eventbrite um, page, but we've also put in a bit of information here. You can see more information if it doesn't all show up and so on. So it's got all of them there the same. And same with the UK one. So that's, yeah, that's that. So all the classes are the same, but they would just show up the timing to match the, the side of the, the world you're on. I think that's all I need to show you about that. So Andrew, is it back to you now? Perfect. Perfect. You can just uh, unshare your screen. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah. All right, so how are we all? Are we all feeling good now? We've got all our tech down. We know what we're doing. And if not, you know that we're there to answer questions that you need, any questions that you're, that you're looking for. So what we're going to do, this it's a bit of a turn this time. So we've, we've done all this tech stuff, and it's, it's hard slog sometimes to get to where you want to be. And this hopefully will be a little bit more lighter, a little bit more fun for you to... Uh, you know, think about how now you're presenting in front of the screen, how you set up your workshop. So some of the things I would like to talk to you about today are all basically what you can call one percenters. You know, there's, there's no big main thing that you do that's going to make you switch on and go, yes, I'm, I'm presenting like I'm uh, a news reporter on TV. But if we can just do these enough one percenters well, then that just makes the session or makes your session a that bit more enjoyable. So I'll just share my screen and we shall get into it. Okay. We'll just do that. All right. So you can see my screen in front. Are we all good? Excellent. All right. Let me. Okay. So. What we're looking to do now is, like I said, this session is presenting like a pro. This is just the, the few basics that you can do to get yourself now ready to run a workshop. So exciting. So what we're going to look at first is we're going to look at the power of positioning. You'll see that all these are called the power of because it's important that you do each one of these or do elements of each one of these really well. So the first thing is, like I said, about position, how you position yourself on the screen. And it might not sound like a, a hugely important thing, but hopefully you'll see as we do some of this, and as I show you some of these slides, how important that can be. So you might see, and you might have heard, and you might have seen lots of selfies from people on social media, and people often have the camera above them, or they have the camera below, or just, just the face on. Now, they did some research on why people do either uh, from above or below. And what they actually found was that uh, for women, for example, if they want to look on the picture attractive, it's more attractive to, uh, I shouldn't say the opposite sex now, should have, to, a, to a different partner um, or to a, to a potential partner, they will take the picture from above. However, if the same woman wants to show support, to somebody, uh, or, or, or a picture that's showing kind of support, they will do it face on. So straight, straight face on. And the difference is, for a man, if he wants to show 
that is attractive to a potential mate, he will go below. And if he were, again wants to show support for, uh, for in, in a picture, he will again go face on. So there's lots of reasons why this could be, and I'm not, I'm not the scientist who did the research, but from my understanding, for, for a man, for example, if he wants to show that he's, uh, like I say, a, a, to, to, to a sexual mate, for example, he will do it below to make himself look bigger because he looks more dominant upon the screen. However, when a woman does that, she's making herself, and potentially, and again, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but the, some of the thinking is that if she's showing it from above, she's actually showing almost submission. She's lower than a potential mate. So again, you've got to remember that these things go back right up until we were hunter-gatherer days. These are things that we do unconsciously. But it's, interesting, it's an interesting scenario to think about when you're positioning yourself upon the screen. So, just with a show of hands, if I can, please, what do you think the best position for you to put on the screen? Do you think it's above? Put your hands up for above. Do you think it's below? Or do you think it's right in front of you? Yeah? All right, there we go. There we go. I'm glad you all said that because I would suggest myself as well that that's the right thing to do. So I'm just going to show you the next slide here. And this is our glorious leader. You'll recognize this gentleman here. And you'll notice that with Pete on that screen, because I just edited an, um, a video for Pete recently. And if you look, he looks really good. He's, he's, he's in that support position and he's looking directly at the camera. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good pause, isn't it? Would, would you agree? Yes or no? Yes? That's a pretty good pause. I'm going to show you the next one because when I edited this video, I've just taken stills from this, by the way, but when I edited it, this is the next picture that I did. This is what I put in. There you go. Now, can I ask you, do you think that the first picture or the second picture, uh, forget about facial expression, by the way, do you, think, do you think he looks better in the first picture or the second picture? So first, put your hand up for first. Again, I can only see five of you on my screen. Put your hand up for second. Yeah. Well, let me give you the reason. In fact, I'll put them together here and let's have a look. Okay, so you can see there the position that he is in that screen. Now, I would suggest, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong with this, but I would suggest that he looks better in the edited version. What I've done is I've brought him up higher in the, in the screen, so he's only got around about two inch between the top of his head and the top of the, and the, top of the screen. So that gives him a bigger position of power within that screen. He looks better. For me, when I saw the original one in the original video, and it's okay because I can edit it, but when I look at that, it makes him look small. Would you agree with that? Yes? Yes or no? Yeah? Right. And I, so just moving him up slightly, just give a better view for me of what, it, of what Pete can look like on a screen. So when you think about doing this for yourself, I want you to think about how am I looking? How am I positioning myself within this screen? To, am I looking small? Like if I, if I stand here, can you see the difference in how I'm uh, positioning myself in a position of authority, for example, because you're listening to me, than if I'm standing here? It makes a difference, right? But yet this is 1% of thing where people will judge you unfortunately within the first four or five seconds of seeing you on a screen just like the would in person so it's important that we set ourselves up right at the beginning so the next part i'd like you now to read i know it's difficult for some of you because some of you are on the phone some of you are um, sat down holding or you've got you've got your ipad or your laptop somewhere but I'd like you to position yourself. I'm just going to give you a few seconds to position yourself better in the screen. 
And, and, and if, you th if you feel that you, you've got a bit of an angle going on, lower, higher, you know, where do you want to be? Do you want to show it as a bit more support? Okay. Now, the hard thing is, is to keep that position because you're probably going to end up slipping back into your normal, comfortable, comfortable position. But having, um, we'll go into this in, in, in one of the later things, but having the right equipment in front of you, when I say equipment, if it's a table, it's a table that's at the right height. So, for example, the table that I'm on currently, I've got it stood on the table and I've got a box because I like to stand up. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a box and I've got my laptop sat on top of a box on top of a table, but it's stable, right? But it's about being able to position yourself and be comfortable as you're doing that. All right. Are we all feeling comfortable? Yes? Fantastic. All right. Let's move on to the next one. So this is called the power of thirds. Now, if any of you are budding uh, photographers, you probably know this rule. Does anybody take a lot of, a lot of photographs or have heard of the law of thirds or the power of thirds? Yes, no? Okay. All right. So what the power of thirds is, is um, it's how we view the world and how things just look different in, uh, in the West. So let me just show you this picture first. So can you all see that picture? Yes. Is there anything wrong with that picture? It's a quite a nice picture. It's quite nicely composed. You know, it's, it's got, but I'm going to show you the next one now. So this is the same picture taken using the rule of thirds. Now putting them together again, which picture would you agree, what would you think looks the best composition of a picture? Would it be the one on the left or the one on the right? So put your hands up for the one on the left. I'll put your hands on. Okay, now put your hands up if you think the one on the right is better. Nice. Well, I would potentially again say, and there's a lot of people who uh, would agree if, you, if they're in the, the world of photography or cinema, cinematography, that the one on the right is better. It's composed better. And I'll, what... Because it's using the law of thirds, I'm just going to, again, just let me get this up here. So this is putting a grid. Now, some of you on your smartphones might already be able to activate this grid when you're taking photographs. So you can see for the first one here, that, that, that's very right bang smack in the middle. And then you've got these thirds lines here and the horizon is right in the middle as well. When you go to this one here, you can see that smack there in the third, that's where your subject matter is. Horizon line is here, right bang on that third. So for you, it can be different again when you're positioning yourself. And I'm gonna show you the same picture as I did with Peter early on. Oh, hang on. Uh, so, oh, sorry, so this is, this is just a slide first. So this is just showing you that, and, and you'll see this all over now. You'll see it when you see reporters on the news and there might be, there might be a, a live event or something like that, or something that's going on, and that they'll never be right bang center in screen. They'll always be to one side. And you can see that just on here, you've got this subject, and you can see straight away, if you go down that third, that's where the subject is placed. The tram is also there. But also look at this, look where her face is. That's bang on a third as well. And then you've got a third on her heart line there. And even in a backdrop, so if you're taking, you know, like I said, this will help you if you're taking uh, pictures. But even, even here you can see that this, this sign here is bang on the third mark. The horizon again is bang on this third mark. So you've got to start to look at how you may compose. Now, this may not be as important for you when you're running a live, a live workshop. However, it's really important to know if you decide you're going to do some videos to promote that, or if you, if you decide you're going to just, just do something. It's, just, it's, it's how we see the world, right? We see the world in these thirds. It's how we position. And again, I'm just going to show you another clip here. So I'll, we'll look here. This is Pete in that first video. Can you see how he's not within any of them thirds? And then we're gonna go back to that edited version now. And here. So you can see we've got 
he's positioned here in this third here his eye is just on this third also look at this third here that runs straight through so so the composition of the picture just makes it more pleasing it just does i don't i, I don't have a, a, a scientific explanation for you but again you watch now any movie and there's somebody doing a monologue you watch any news reporter you watch anything like that and you will see any presenter and they will always stand to one side of the screen. Or even anybody been interviewed. All right, so now it's time for you to do the same again. So have a look at yourself on the picture and say, how can I readjust myself? So I'm sat, you know, we've talked about position and now we're going to talk about potentially standing in thirds. So whatever that is for you. Beautiful, Patricia. You look so much better already. How's that? <laughs> and now I can see you, Julianne, as well. Great. All doing so well. And Mana was sat there. Right? She, we did this earlier on, so Mana already knew. So that's, <laughs> that's why she's positioned herself like that. <laughs> All right. So, so, do you understand what we've talked about so far? Are you all okay with what we've talked about so far? Has anybody got any questions with what we've talked about so far? If you have, put them in the chat box. We can have a look at that later for you. All right, let's crack on. So we're now going to talk about the power of lighting and how it can make such a difference to how you look and how you're perceived upon the camera. I'm going to show you this picture first. Again, I'm going to ask you a question. From the left to the right, number one being the left, two being the middle, three being the right, which looks best for you? Which looks the best picture? And you're like, oh, I like this, we're showing it. Yes. So most of you there are saying number three. Brilliant. And that's right. But what's interesting is if this is the same gentleman on the same day, but do you think he actually looks younger on picture number three? Doesn't, you can't see the bags the same on his eyes. You can't see, you know, it doesn't look like he's got this a sweaty complexion as in the middle one. So, and that's the difference. All that's down to lighting. How you light yourself and how people that will then perceive you. So here's an example. So if you can see here, We've got, if, if this is the, the subject and here, and the camera is placed here and the light is in front, you can see that it fills the entire face. There's no shadows. If we have a 45 degree, you can see how, we, you see how now we create this shadow on, on one side of your face. You're probably already looking now, looking around and going, where's the light source in the room, right? Uh, if you go to the side, so if you've got a light source on the side, you can see all this darkness that's going to appear. And if you can see here, what, what it says beside with reflector fill is, if you've ever seen, if you've ever been to a wedding and, and you see they get these, these uh, big foil circles out and put them in places as they're taking photos, it's to reflect the light back. So if you do have it from one side, it does light some of the other up. Now, obviously, we're not going to be going and getting the whole studio done. So my suggestion always is, is to have the light in front of you as a subject. There you go. <laughs> I can see a few of you shuffling things around already. Fantastic. All right, so I just thought a little bit of a quiz here. Where do you think the light source is on this picture? Do you think it's to the left or do you think it's to the right? Yes, yeah, to the right, right? In fact, on this picture, he's got an overhead light, just like, just like a ceiling light. And that's the only thing he's got to, that's the only thing he's got to light him. Have a look at this picture. Where do we now think the light source is? Is it to the left, is it to the right? Is it to the front or is, it, is the light source behind him? What do we think? 
think it's behind? Yeah, you can point, I can see if you point. Great. And as you can see, that you're right, the light source is behind him. And I'm sure many of you have taken lots of pictures where the lights are, where you think, oh, that's, that's a really good picture. You take it and you can't see Nobby's faces because of where the light is. I'm sure you would agree. Here's another example of that. By a window, which is a real good natural light source, but by a window, look how dark he is. It's just a silhouette. Now, can you imagine not realizing this and actually running a meditation workshop with that sort of lighting? <laughs> is it blinding you now, Julia? I can just see. <laughs> That's all right. So this is the light source. Well, again, you've got to be really careful. I've, I've done the same. I've taken many a picture. And then, th then when I've gone to look at it, I thought, this is, this is just absolutely no good. The best light source you can have is outside, a natural light source. However, there's one caveat to that. So you can see here, and again, I'm guilty of taking many pictures and saying smile, and the smile, and they're all squinting as well because the sun is directly on them and, uh, and they, they can't help but, but squint to be comfortable. So the best place if you're going to run one, again, this is if you can, and I'm talking these are one percenters, you might take some of these, you might not take all of them. But the best light source is if the light source is in front of you and it's a natural light. That will give you the absolute best. Now, tonight and, and in these sessions, when you're in the UK, you'll just be getting some nice light source at the moment. It's dark out here, so we've got to have artificial light. Uh, to, to run through but if you can do it this if you could have a window when I do some of my videos and I do them uh, do them in my front room I've got a big long window and I put the camera there and I stand looking in front of the window and again caveat unless the sun's blaring through and then it, you won't get the same the same result I see some of you have already been doing this a little bit Let's just see, just have a, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes of this. I want you to just have a play. You know, maybe you're looking and going, where's the light source? Where do I need to just shuffle around to, to get the best uh, look for me? So just have a play and see how you go with that. I'll give you, I'll just give you one minute to do that. I can see you all. Fantastic. <laughs> Even Sarah there's look look at look at that. So much so much better. <laughs> all right. Hopefully you're feeling comfortable now. Uh, you're looking better. Don't forget, now you've moved to a better light source. What we're doing, we've still got to keep that position, still got to look that thirds. So, but doing really, really well. So we move on to the next one now. So the next one is the power of equipment. And guess what? The more you spend, the better it will be. However, the aim of this is that we're not gonna spend anything, we're gonna use the things that we've got. Because what I want, what I want you to understand is that something is better than nothing. I'd rather you be getting on with it, so progression is better than perfection. I'd rather you be getting on and getting this up and running. And if you do feel you need something, then later down the track you can go and buy it. But I don't want it to stop you. If you're like me, and when it comes to this sort of stuff, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. However, I so thought that can lead me to not do something because I can go, oh, well, I'll just put it off because I really need this to get going. Or uh, maybe I'll just wait a week and I'll go and buy this. And once I've bought that, then I'll have a look. And guess what? Something always comes up. So progression is better than perfection. Let's get these things up and let's get them running. But I just want to give you a, a, a basic understanding here. Any one of these is absolutely fine. I, at this moment, I'm working on my laptop. And... You, other than that, you can work on your phone. Your phone has got a really powerful camera. But what I would suggest here is when you are doing that, 
Uh, like you see, that's got a gimbal. I don't know if most of you are aware of what a gimbal is, but you can hold it, turn it, and it will keep the camera steady for you. Or just have it on a solid base. You could have a big camera like the third one there, or a DSLR. Now, there's nothing wrong if you've got a DSLR and you're going to do some recorded videos, fantastic. But to me, I don't see the point of setting up something like that with leads going through to do a live feed. Manny, you say you stopping me for a, a reason there, or you'll have to unmute yourself, sorry. No? I'm going to, I can't hear what she's saying, so I'm going to move on. Oh. I'm just waving the journalist's daughter. She's waving, so I thought I'll just. Oh. Take <laughs> All right, I thought that was at me. I do apologize. All right, so we'll crack on. So sorry, sorry for that. I told her to not wave. <laughs> I can't wave. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so so like I said, but if it really doesn't matter for me, you can see that the laptop has got a good camera. The the phone has got a really powerful camera for most of your smartphones. So they are really good to use. The next is, again, I would suggest highly that if you are gonna go out and buy some equipment, if you haven't got a tripod, buy a tripod. You don't have to spend a fortune, they're really affordable these days. This one here, you can probably pick up for, you know, some of them, they don't have to be an expensive one, but you can probably pick them up for maybe $20, or 10 pounds something like that. And the same with these little things here as well, which are just tabletop ones. Or if you are outside and you're gonna run your meditation in your garden or something like that, and you've got a tree, these are really good because you can bend them around the tree and, and they will stay solid and hold it for you. So again, there are a couple of the things there. It is really important because like, for example, like I said, I'm stood on, a, mine's on the table here, there's a box on the table and then the laptop on top of the box. But if you've got something you might think, well, this chair will do, what you don't want is if you're typing to someone or you're showing and, and every time you're going like this and, the, and it's moving as you're doing it, I just don't think it's a very good look. So just having some, something stable, basically, a stable platform for you to do that. All right, improvise with your lighting, like we talked about, just have a play around. I, I'll show you what I've got at the moment. Um, so, I've not, I've not got any natural light, but I have purchased one of these, which is a light ring. Like I said, when you do this, you can see it in my glasses. And it's really good. And it literally cost me about $25. So it's not expensive. You can find it on eBay or Wish or something like that. But it doesn't have to be just something. I actually, to the, to the left of me here, I don't know if I can show you actually. Don't, this might come in, but oh, there you go. So I've actually got, a lamp and I've taken the I've taken the lamp shade off and I've just got that at the side to create a bit more because I knew that I had that the light source in the room was here so I wanted something to balance that at this side so I've got uh, a lamp with the light sh uh, a lamp with the shade off and I've got the light ring in front of me now what I really like I'm going to show you the differences now with this with this light ring and this is why I think it can it can make the difference between a good video and an excellent one so this has got a few settings on it. And just watch the screen now for those of you who can't see a screen. I am just going to, first of all, I can adjust the brightness of this. So just here, can you see that it's going slightly, slightly darker? Or I can go back up again. Oh, yeah. And also it has two lights in it. So it's got a, a bluey light and it's got a, a warmer light as well. So I'll show you the difference. I'm just stuck with the warm light on at the moment. So if I do that, can you see the difference in complexion? So again, this sometimes is quite good if you just need the extra bit of light, but you've got natural light coming in, or you can have both of them on. Oh no, sorry, that's, so that's the, that's the bluey, that's the cream, and that's both of them. Again, blue light, cream light, a warm light, should I say, and then both of them. But I've just been operating on here. So like I said, I know that I've got a light here, I know that I've got a light there, and the one in front of me as well. You can't, this is about playing around. I probably spent half an hour before we started this, 
just getting the lighting right because you know if, if I'm talking about it it'll hopefully well hopefully it looks good if I'm talking about it, it should be right but on a good day if you're in front you may only need I won't use the light ring if, it, if it's during the day and I've got the, I've got a light source in front of me but again this is about progression better than perfect it's better than perfection at this moment so find something find something you can use find a lamp find a light or something not something that's not bright in your face but just something where you can really uh, look your best you know again the more professional you can come across the more people will want to and, and feel like they're, they're getting something from you you know it's like anything else if you uh, if you drive it around in a Rolls Royce, you'll feel like you're driving around in a Rolls Royce, right? You know, so if it looks like a Rolls Royce product, you'd be expected to pay a Rolls Royce price. That makes sense? All right. Okay. Now this is, this is a slider stall, the one on the left here. So, but I, but I, thought, I thought it was quite good. How to hold your phone correctly when filming with your smartphone? Portrait orientation. Portrait will, uh, people will cry if you film like this. <laughs> I'm not sure it will bring them to tears. However, we live in a widescreen world. It's so easy to pick your phone up in the position that's comfortable in your hand and do, a, and do a portrait video. But it doesn't look good, as you can see here, when, when it's filled with two black panels at each side. It just makes it look cheap. It, don't get me wrong, these portraits are really good if you're just going to go, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, if you're just going to go on and do an, uh, a Facebook, quick Facebook video, hey, just let you know, an hour's time, we'll be, we'll be running the meditation class. Finished. But please don't start running things in narrow. Let's get a nice wide angle, a landscape orientation. Like I said, we view the world in we view the world in widescreen. And think about that as well. You know, we're so used to it when we look at, when we look at uh, computer screens, when we look at TVs. You don't see a TV in portrait. You wouldn't want to watch a movie in portrait, right? We want to watch them in a widescreen. Use simple props, okay? Now, you might recognize there's something, or you might notice that there's something different than what they were in the first two sessions that, that we ran. Certainly from my point of view, that I had a complete bare back at the, at the back there. Now I've introduced my friend, and my friend's actually quite famous because he appears in quite a lot of my videos. This here, this is Bernard, and Bernard appears in a lot of my videos just to give, just to give it a bit of a feel. There's something about having a plant in the picture that just makes it feel a lot more homely. And again, just some simple things, depending on what you want to look at, depending on how the feel you want, which, which comes on to this next slide here. You know, it's about setting the mood. So if you were setting the mood for a business event, you would have it looking formal, right? You'd, have, you'd maybe have a suit and tie on. You'd probably have a business. You'd be on a desk with a big chair. However, if it's for meditation, have a look around your home and go, where would it be best? You know, this is going to be your business. Is there somewhere that I can leave set up, set up or I can easily set that up every time? And just put things in place, some nice soft furnishings that just give people the ambience of when they come into, into your room. Just like it would be if they came into a studio and you was there. So just have a think about these things. How can I make it look 10% better, 1% better? What's, it go What's that going to look like? Have I got a nice plant in there? You can get your own Bernard. But if, can I, have I got a nice plant in there? Have I got something that just, that just makes it feel homely? Maybe there's candles. Maybe it's, even though there won't be a smell, maybe you've got some joysticks burning. You know, it still gives that ambiance. Uh, for the person coming in. They feel immediately like they're coming into a warm place or a, or a nice place or a secure place. Just makes them feel better. All right. Is that, 
are we all good with all that? Yes, yeah, so, like I say, progression is better than perfection. Progression is better than perfection. It's, it's about having a bit of thought in what you're doing. You know, rather than just going, right, I've got to get something done. I know we've been talking. You've got to get this done. Now you've got to get Eventbrite done. Now you've got to get this done because you've got to run your first session. But actually, it's, it's about taking a step back with this and going, okay, how can I do it the best I can with the things I've got available? Make sense? Yes? Great. All right. I am really conscious of time, so I know we'll be sort of pushing that, but we will push on through this. The next is the power of authenticity. And it's one of the things that I, I'm really passionate about is showing people's authenticity. So we're going to go through some of these and some of these might take a little bit more effort than, than some of the others. But it's also about how you run then or how to prepare and how to run your workshop. So first, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You know, this is not something where you can potentially just wing it and go, right, I'm just going to get it, up, get it up and done. Have a plan. Write down what your class is going to look like. At what time will you be sitting down? Are you going to have a chat first? Are you going to have a talk? Are you going to ask a question to them and get everybody to answer? So have a plan on what you want that to look like. Maybe put even timings down there. So if you've got four 15-minute meditations, then it's going to take an hour and an hour and 20 minutes to go through the thing. Write down what you're going to do. The first meditation is going to be this. We're then going to have a bit of a break and we're going to have a bit of a chin wag and I'll grab a drink and everything. And then we're going to get into the next one. So it's about just planning what you're going to do. Because if you don't and you look floundering, now you might think that this is, is a bit uh, off cuff if you like. However, each one of these sessions that you've seen so far has been run through so between Manor and myself we've run through every session before we've done them just to make sure we're giving the best value we can to you guys so we're not just saying okay this is what it is and we're just going to go for it we've run through every session did this work did that work should we change this how's this looking what shall i do here so you might want to do the same thing Practice beforehand, which brings, that, which brings us to this. So the next thing is, is to practice. Before you're going to go live, practice, practice, practice. FaceTime one of your friends. Uh, take, them through, take them through the, uh, the Zoom. Let them do it and, and you show them what you're going to do. Ask for honest feedback. Record yourself doing it and watch it back. But again, I'm going to add a caveat on here. Please, please, please don't watch it back and go, oh, I wish my hair had looked, had looked a bit better there. Oh, I, I'm not going to wear that top. I look a bit not, not, not as nice in that top. This is not about that. This is about practicing how you're coming across. Because guess what? The first couple of times you're going to do this, because you don't get the same feedback you do from a room, because guess what? Everybody's on mute. Because you don't get the same feedback, it's hard, it's a different situation, it's a different feel. So you've really just got to get used to that and not having that same sort of feedback. That's why I get you to go like this. So you all, I know that you're still listening, still engaged, hopefully, in what I'm saying. So practice, practice, practice. Record yourself. Don't worry about aesthetics of yourself or anything like that. Worry about how am I looking and am I coming across like I want to come across? And practice will do that. Believe you me, this, this how I'm speaking to you now didn't happen by accident. I wasn't suddenly a natural speaker. Like I said at the beginning, I'm a bit of an introvert. So to do this is, is an effort for me to do. But with practice and with the understanding of why I'm doing it, that makes the biggest difference. I worked recently uh, with Mana. I'm sure I'm, I'm just bringing you in now, Mana. But I just bring in, uh, I worked recently with Mana on, on some of her videos. And it took us quite a while to get to the real Mana. Is that, that right, Mana? It took, us, it, took us, it took us a few attempts before we got the real Mana that you see. Because we all feel that we've got to put on this 
show or this and, that. and I, I don't believe that. I think we've just got to show who we are that's why people come to you that's why people join with you because because they believe in you you know people I'm just actually just running a, a session next week called story selling and um, people buy into you before they buy what you do so but they won't get that unless they see that that you're a real authentic person they feel that if they feel that anything's uh, false the bs barrier will go straight up and switch off but you'll get that through practice you don't have to put on a show you just have to be you okay like i said we did this before conduct a run through do it with someone else maybe as a group you can say okay can i send you know sarah might say can i send it to mana mana can you can you can I do this with you? And then can you do this with me? And then we can see what works and what doesn't. Use the group that you've got to practice with each other. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll find somebody. If not, a friend, a family member, but run through it. Run through it and say, okay, is, this, is the sound right? Is the lighting right? Could it have been better? Okay? Ha. Huh check equipment beforehand <laughs> sounds a really simple one but it's amazing how many times you see you see these things and you know i have this set up as you see here probably about two hours before so i know what everything's going to do i know that, that my laptop's charged and plugged in i've got all my notifications switched off on, on my phone so i don't get buzzes going off and also um you know, I make sure that um, all the lights are on in the right place. I've checked the equipment beforehand. Put your phone in flight mode. Okay. <laughs> I know some of you go, oh, I can't have my phone on flight mode. Because if I do that, I might miss something. I'll put it on silent instead. That way that'll be okay. We all, have you ever been in a meeting? Or have you ever been in, in a, uh, been to see a show and somebody's phone goes off? Yes? I'm sure we've all been there, right? First of all, you first, well, the, what you might say is, oh, who didn't put their phone on silent? But just before that, for a split second, you go, oh, is that me? And it takes you out of that, that mood that, that you've been in, right? And I'm sure maybe you've run meditation classes where somebody else's phone has gone off. Yes, no? And it just, ru and again, with meditation especially, it just ruins that all ambiance of what you're doing. Now, can you imagine if your phone went off and it was you? Or even if it's on silent, you hear that buzzing. For that split second, everybody's out of that state and you have to get them back into state. So having it on flight mode, means that you don't get notifications, you don't get anything coming through. Like for example, because I use Mac, my phone, every time it rings or I get a message, it also comes up on, on the computer. Uh, so if, I wouldn't want when I'm doing this to have a notification that came through that was on my phone or a text message that maybe I wouldn't want anybody to see. <laughs> so. Best thing, stay in flight mode. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Start with a smile and smile throughout. Really, really important thing. I know it sounds, again, doesn't sound like much, but this is, this is one of them one percenters that's, that's massive. I run a lot of uh, training sessions for people in call centers and, and people who are on the phone a lot. And the, one of the biggest things I tell them is to smile when they're on the phone. And I just want you to, to, to show you the reason for that. So I'm not going to shut off the videos, but I'd like you all just to close your eyes for one moment and just listen to me. I'm going to say two statements. So I'll close your eyes. Okay. Hi. Hi, my name's Andrew Keating, and welcome to this session on presenting like a pro.
Okay, keep your eyes closed. Hi, my name is Andrew Keating. I'd like to welcome you to this presentation on presenting like a pro. Okay, open your eyes. Okay, which sounded best to you, the first one or the second one? The second one, yes? Could anybody tell? Brilliant. Why do you think the second one sounded better? It's because I smiled. I smiled as I was talking. You could feel that smile. It changes your energy. I don't know if any of you, I did have a prop here, I don't know where it's gone. Um, but there's, there's some scientific studies on nonverbal behavior. And what they say is if you're feeling quite flat or you don't feel yourself that day, you don't feel, you know, you feel a bit, bit down, the, the very fact of putting a pen in your mouth for two minutes will lift your mood. So why do you think that is? Well, the simple reason is putting a pen in your mouth activates the, the smile muscles, the same muscles that you use to smile. And if that's the case, what happens is it, it goes up to your brain and your brain says, we're smiling. So it releases the chemicals of smiling and helps you feel better. So that's why it's important to smile. I guarantee you, in fact, who can I pick? Joanna there? Okay, you got your hand in front of your mouth. Oh, he smiled back at me. <laughs> Why did you smile back at me? Because I smiled, right? It's contagious. You walk down the street, you smile at somebody, they will smile back. It's a, it's a way of building rapport with people. An instant rapport is to smile. Now, you may be talking about something that's very serious, and it's, it doesn't seem very, uh, you know, you might be talking about, you know, the world's about to end, and hey, it might be, right? But when we're talking about these serious things, it's still important that at the end, you smile. And you notice this again, when you watch TV, when you watch the news the next time, they'll say, they'll say something, they always start with a smile, and then they'll say something like, they'll tell you that the world's about to end, and then they'll go, okay, well, thank you very much, we'll see you tomorrow. And, with, and they leave and we all think that everything's better again, because they've ended with a smile. So again, start with that smile. Connect with the people that's on the other side of the camera. Smile throughout. When you stop saying something, if there's a gap, and you just smile. And you'll smile and you'll reconnect with them. And then when you finish, finish with a nice broad smile. Again, sometimes on camera, maybe ex accentuate your, your smile a little bit more than you normally would. You might be a... Eh? Show your teeth, smile, so people can see. There you go, looking better already. Look how much, look at how much more happy you are looking, energetic you are looking, with a nice smile on your face, right? So there we are. So yeah, really important, simple little thing, but it will make the biggest difference. All right, start your, start your session by asking a universal question. So, if you don't know what a universal question is, it's, a, it's an agreement question, you might have heard it called, where they can all give you the same answer. So they all can give you an affirmative answer, should I say. So for example, if you, know, if you remember on the very first session, I actually asked you, I was getting you to put a hand up to, to say when I asked you a question, but I actually asked you a universal question. I says, put your hand up if you've got a mobile. Pretty much everybody can put their hand up on that, right? Because it's a universal question. We've all got that. So think of your own universal question. The reason why these work so well, and especially for my friends, and dog, for my friends in, in the UK, you know, what do we say when two people get together? What do they talk about? The weather, right? One of the first things. Because it's a universal subject that they can all talk about that connects you. Two strangers can talk about the weather and have a conversation about the weather. So a universal question, so start with that, and that's getting an agreement from everybody. You might watch Tony Robbins, or you might watch somebody, somebody like that on a screen, and you'll see that a lot of the time throughout his sessions is going, uh, do you agree with that, yes or no? And he'll put his hand up, and everyone will go, yes, because he's getting an agreement to what he's doing. So think of your own universal questions that you can get throughout the session. Oh, at the beginning of the session, should I say. That way, 
that agreement gets them to buy into you. And of course, it's a good rapport builder. All right, signpost is the next one. So what this is, it's signposting what you're doing before you, what's going to happen before you do it. So for example, the last time you went to the dentist, say for a filling, he didn't put you in the chair or she didn't put you in the chair, lay you back and start drilling in your mouth or injecting you. What they did beforehand is called signposting. So they told you what was going to happen before it happened so there was no surprises. So they might have said something like, okay, so we're just gonna put you back in this chair here. Um, we, this is the tooth we're gonna be working on today. First of all, we'll give you an injection. You might feel a little bit of a scratch on the inside of your thing there. We'll make sure it goes really numb first and then you might feel some movement in the mouth and we'll talk you on the way through. So it's signposted exactly what's gonna happen before it happens. And it's important to do the same. And again, if you go back to the very first session and the, back, and the, uh, the first, the beginning of the second session, I told you the things that might go wrong. So I said to you something like, uh, well, you, you see that there's lots of things that can go wrong in a session. It might be that you hear some noise because my dog's laid down here and I've got the kids in the other room there. You know, you might hear some noise from them. If you've told people that beforehand, they will accept it when it happens. So if something does go wrong, I said, we might, the internet connection might drop off. You know, the power might go out. And what I'm doing is I'm signposting things that might happen before. And once you've done that, it's no surprise to anybody if that happens. But suddenly, if one of my children runs through the door screaming, and I haven't signposted that that might happen, that's going to be a shock for some people. I might take them out of uh, state. So signposting, what's going to happen? Right, we're going to do four meditations today. The first one is going to be on this. Then we're going to have a five minute break. Then the second one's going to be on this. Now, you may hear some noises going on, but I don't want that to bother you as you go through these things. We just want to put it to the back of your mind. This is what, you know, and people will understand that as long as you've told them first. All right, look directly at the camera. Now, I know this might sound a really silly thing, of course, why would you not be looking at the camera? But I actually find this really hard. So for example, as I'm talking right now, the camera is, I can usually see it on the laptop because there's a little green light that, that tells me exactly where, where the camera is. So I can look directly down the lens at the camera. But if you're like me who likes to connect with people, I'm actually looking at some of the pictures on the screen as, as I'm doing it because I like to connect. Now, it's not too bad if you're on a laptop. The, different, the difficult part is if you're on a mobile phone. So for example, if you've got a mobile phone and remember it's in landscape mode, their camera is there or there, right? If you're looking here, you're not having direct eye contact. So it's important that if we're addressing, addressing the, 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 the people out there, your, your members, that look at the camera if you're looking right down. So, so rather than me looking like I'm looking like this and talking, it's far better if I'm talking to the camera in front, right? Little thing makes a difference. Again, this comes down to really the authenticity of saying, be un unashamedly you. Now, what I mean by this as well is you don't have to be somebody, you don't have to present. Right? You don't have to be a newsreader. You, you don't have to be the Tony Robbins. You don't have to be, I don't know, somebody that you really like who, who's good on stage. You don't have to do it. All you have to be is you. However, when I'm presenting face-to-face -face group and face-to-face -face training, I'm, you know, I'm very energetic and very passionate about what I do. And I walk around and I move around a lot. It's just what I do, I pace up and down and I walk. What you have to do is be unashamedly you minus 10%, <laughs> right? And what I mean by that is, if I was talking to a face-to-face to a -face group now, my, I, I use my hands a lot, as you can probably tell, I, I'm, I'm a lot more uh, mobile than what I am, but if I was suddenly walking around here, 
as I'm talking to you, moving backwards and forwards and clapping my hands. It just looks, it just looks strange on the screen, right? But if I was in a room, it would probably be all right. So what I do is, obviously I'm still here, but I'm unashamedly me, but I'm 10% less energetic, 10% less sort of passion. Hopefully that still comes through. Now, if you're really calm, if you've got a really calm approach and really think, be, be unashamedly that, just less 10%. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example here as well where well, I, talked to you, I talked to you earlier about I was doing the video with uh, a v, I, 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 editing Pete's video. When he did it, now, when I get the feeling when, when Peter speaks, and you may tell me wrong here, that every word that comes out of his mouth has been considered before it comes out. Not me who just rambles on, but I feel he's very considered in what he says. But when I put music to Pete's video, it, there was something that wasn't gelling. But, if I, but what I did is I upped the speed of what he was saying by 10%, because he's very considered and... and uh, you know, sort of softly, but um, slowly spoken. But just sort of upping him 10% made that better with the music and made it more engaging. So for that, because he, he was, he's slow and considered, his less 10% is actually plus 10%. <laughs> so think about what you do and maybe just tone it down the slightest bit. Just so, you know, if you speak really, really quickly, People can gauge that easier when you're face to face and can listen, but maybe just slowing down 10% would make it just that little bit more easier to hear, especially over the microphones. But the main thing is, I can't stress this enough, just be you. That's why people and your members, and that's why they come to your, to your wonderful meditations, is because you're you. What did I say to you earlier? People buy into you before they buy into what you do. So I just want you to be who you are, okay? And kind of last but not least, have fun. You know, you are going to be nervous the first couple of times you do this, but the more you do it, it'll just become natural. This is the new world. When people realize, it might be six months, when people realize that they can get the same result over over, the, over uh, an online event that they can in person, they might not want to leave the house. Of our cocoons, it might be that you've got a mixture of a, li you know, a live going on as you're doing a group meditation, you know? But this is a new world, so just have fun with it. All right. And the next thing I just want to talk about, just want to really touch on, is I want you to create your tribe. We're going to talk about this a little bit in the next session. But remember, there's, there's a really good saying um, from Jim Rohn. I don't know if you've heard of Jim Rohn, uh, of course, deceased now. But he said that you are um, a percentage of the five people you hang around with. So you are... So, and that can be for everything. So you're like the five percent, sorry, you're like the five people you hang around with most. So people, again, the members that are coming to you like something about you. But what I mean by this as well is, and I know that when we talked about this, I would highly suggest when you do your Zoom videos that you have, let people come in and talk before you do the video. So, like tonight, for example, you had to be let in when the host was here. I'd have the waiting room personally for you because if people come to your session, what do they do before they sit down to meditate? They probably have a chat with somebody, and what's probably going to happen is, is they, they debrief their day and download their day before they move on. If suddenly you're just coming into it, and then starting, they're missing some of that community side. This is still about creating a community for your tribe. And it might be that after the session, like we've been hanging around a little bit to answer your questions, you might do the same, but just having a chinwag. You might have a question of the day. So after the meditation or before the meditation, you might have a question of the day. You know? And it might be something really silly that people, everybody has to answer. 
and it just creates something and, and keeps the connection going between you and your membership. And that's what all this is about, really. It's about the val not just the value add, but how you can keep, in this time, how you can keep connected. Because the longer it is before you speak to them, the longer it is before you do any uh, uh, meditation classes live, people forget. They haven't done it for six months. And then you suddenly, you haven't spoke to them at all for six months, and suddenly go, right, meditation class are on again. They'll go, huh. All right, who cares? But if they're your tribe, and what, you know, as humans, we all migrate to a tribe of like minded people. So we've got to do the same thing. So that's your tribe. They're there for a reason, they're because they want to be connected with like minded people. So let's make sure that we look after that. Don't take it for granted and foster them relationships. And that, my friends, is me done. So hopefully you've got something from that that you can use. I'm realizing we've gone way over time, so thank you for hanging around and staying. Hopefully it's been, it's been worthwhile. Has it been worthwhile? Yes? Yep, great. Yes. Thank you very much, Andy. <laughs> All right, so that's me over. We'll see you on Saturday, uh, same time, I believe. I'll pass back over to Peter and he's so just finished the session. But thank you for listening. Thank you for being engaged in what, what I've said as well and getting involved. It means a lot when you can't see that, that you don't feel that energy coming back the same. So thank you very much and I'll, and I'll see you on Saturday. See the smile at the end? Yeah, <laughs> good job, Andy. All right, thank you. Lots of powerful tips there. And like you said, it's those 1% little, little differences that make the difference. So I won't stay long. You were, we will stay on for a little bit of time, but uh, next session on Saturday, we're going to be able to talk about getting people to your meditation um, classes. So all different things we can do. Now there's lots to talk about there. We're going to give you a recap. Um, but a lot of uh, the marketing um, suggestions that we've got is in the resources vault under the section called marketing. We also have a little thing there, the seven day Kickstarter package, which is sort of seven quick, easy things you can do to try to get people to come to your classes. Now they're written to try to get people to come obviously to live classes, but nevertheless, many of the same principles um, apply. So please, in between now and Saturday, have a look in that uh, marketing section and the, the seven-day uh, uh, seven Kickstarter session to refresh yourself of the different things that you can do to try to pull people into your event. And uh, if you have any questions, then next session is uh, when we will answer those uh, questions. So. Um, that's a brief introduction of next session. I won't take you any longer. Uh, thank you, Namaste. Thank you very much. We will be, we will stay online for another five or ten minutes if anyone has any uh, questions. But other than that, uh, we'll stop the recording and uh, see you in three days' time. See you later. <laughs>